go down and do this. All right, on the bench this week, 2011 Fender Telecaster. Uh, this one comes to me from a new customer. It's kind of neat. I, uh, you know, started doing this channel and working through all these guitars. Um, that was just guitars in our jam room because there's dozens of them, and they all needed work. So that was kind of my mission when I started. And I'm bringing in a lot of new people who see my stuff and play guitars I've worked on, and that's a good feeling. Um, I just want to get them out there and played. That's all I want. So we're going to go through this one. Uh, this one is a little different for me because a uh, guy left me a good set of notes. And um, normally when I take a guitar, I just go through it. I play it, see how it plays, and then I just kind of, you know, do all the steps that I do, and everything gets kind of fixed along the way. But I wanted to actually work through a list, and we'll see if we can solve any of these before we actually, you know, tear it down and take it apart. So, let's get set up, and we'll get to it. All right, our first note, general setup for intonation and lowest action without being very buzzy. Let's see what we can do about that. Let's start with tuning it up, plugging it in, making sure it makes noise. All right, let's tune. good there. Alright, first part of our list. Low E is buzzy at most frets below the 12th. Yeah, I'm hearing that. Oh yeah, right there, really bad. from somewhere in here. I'm gonna just sight down the neck, see if what kind of relief it has. It's a pretty flat neck. And you know what, looking down the side, just looking down the side, there's some ripples in these frets, like coming up. Right up and through here into that a little more but yep I'm hearing that buzzing um, so let's check a couple frets beyond that uh, let's see so the 12th let's see what's the 11th sounds like it's not on the 11th but it is picking up on the 12th so a little rocking in here on these three frets. All right, second part of our list. A is maybe not perfect at the 2, 8, and 10. So let's check it. Let's tune this up to A. We're on 2, nearly a, nearly a C. Um, Eight. That's an F. Ten. And it's a G. Let's check the intonation. It's a little sharp when you fret it, so that would mean that the uh, saddle would have to come back 
that way a little bit. So that's probably that issue. All right. Number three on our list. G is clangy and harsh, unfretted, and every fret almost. It is rather clangy. I can hear the clang. Yeah, so the G, we got some, uh, some frets up right here and right here. Those are some high spots, so that might be the clangy. It's ringing in there, hitting on one of these. Last on our list is a high E, maybe lack sustain. Yeah, I can, I can kind of see that. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna take the strings off. Uh, we'll work through the fretboard, see where our high spots and our low spots are. Uh, I wanna smooth over these uh, saddles too a little bit. They're a little bit rough. That might be where some of our buzz is coming from. And the nut, he was concerned about the nut, but that nut's got a lot of life left in it. Uh, if anything, the B, is actually dug in a little bit deeper than the rest but we're not really having problems with the bee so that's fine so yeah there's a lot of life left in this nut <laughs> insert your own joke this neck is super flat too so i might add just a hair of relief in it and uh, see what we can do about bringing the strings down so let me set you up and we'll get to work on that. So I've got my red sharpie and my fret checker mabob. I'm going to go through the frets. I'm going to check them all. Wherever they're high, I'm going to mark them with the sharpie. triple check those I ended up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 frets that are a little bit rough. Um, these ends here, they're not coming out of the neck. They're still set there. Um, I might just give them a little tap with the John Henry and call that a day. But I definitely want to tape up, so that's what I'll be doing next. Yep. Nice. This tape will come off as easily as it went on. Let's see. Nice. Ah, this one. So I'm down here on the bridge. Uh, four of the saddles are totally smooth on the tops. Two of them uh, have a little bit of a ridge indent. The B's a little noticeable. The G is really noticeable. I don't know if it'll come across on camera, it's so minuscule, but if you rub your finger over the top of the G and the B, you can feel an indent. It's actually almost on the back. You can see it there in the G and also on the B. Um, that might not be too big of an issue, but I like to have them smooth. Let your stuff roll in there and not buzzing in a, in a little crevice there. So a minuscule thing, but I am going to just use a little bit of light sandpaper and polish it a little bit. Uh, the rest of them are pretty smooth. Um, but yeah, if I run my fingernail across the top, I feel a catch there and this G right there. So smooth those out and see where we are. So I was able to fix the B. 
Just a couple swipes of the sandpaper. It's good as new. Can't even tell it's there. The G on the other hand, uh, gave it a couple swipes with sandpaper and it was just it just feels terrible. Um, so I got out my spectacles to get a closer look and I found there's a huge chip right down the back where the metal just chipped out of it. I don't know if it's the chrome plating or a piece of the the casting itself. Um, so I could I could take that off and sand it and file it and sand it and file it and try to get it smooth but um, I have this donor bridge and this is from the same era Telecaster. This has been a the gift that keeps on giving. Um, I've been using this for saddle screws on all these fenders I've been fixing with the terrible saddle screws. I'm down to two. So uh, so I took one of the saddles off that and it's a perfect match. You'll probably never even know. Uh, it's a little dingy. I'm going to polish it up with some chrome polish and just replace that G. I think that's the easiest and uh, best thing to do. So yeah, that donor bridge came off of the Sodercaster guitar that I made for my friend Nils. He uh, had a Tele uh, modern player and uh, it was really heavy and he always wanted a thin line so we rebodied the modern player onto a thin line and uh, it's been a pretty decent player. But he would be happy to know that parts of his Telecaster now live on in the uh, in the hearts of all these fenders I've been fixing. That's kind of neat. All right, on second thought, that's not going to work. The saddle screws do not fit in this new one into the new saddle, so, or the old saddle, or the donor saddle. So I'm going to have to go to work on that G saddle that came with this, that's chipped. Let's see what I can do, I think I might put the grind uh, dremel on it, light grinder. All right, I got that G smoothed out really well. A little filing, and uh, feels a lot better. They all do. So, string should run smoothly over that now. But I think we need to get to cleaning it. All right, this thing's not really that dirty. He keeps it pretty clean, but uh. Just gonna start just getting some of the you know fingerprints and stuff off with some glass cleaner. Sprayway. Make it smell nice too. I like using this stuff because it's ammonia free. Finish that up with some spray wax. This is a wax cleaner, so this will also make it smell nice and uh, give it a nice little shine. All right, let's string it up. He gave me some Ernie balls, 1046. give a little tilt to this neck. It's got good relief, but I think it could just use a little bit more right here. Fortunately, it's got a tilt-o-matic. 
The Tiltomatic bridge allows you to just give a little minuscule amount of uh, of neck angle instead of having to use shims. And that was about a quarter turn. So this telemacaster is approved by Grandpa Rob and Vic Hocklebuck. See them shredding away on it. Go through my list and see what I did. Uh, the low E was buzzy on most frets below the 12th. Uh, it turned out there was a couple of high frets on the edge right here. We took those down, fixed all the frets, got them all level. Uh, the A was not perfect at the 2, 8, and 10. That turned out to be an intonation problem. The G is clangy and harsh, unfretted, and at most every fret. Uh, that turned out to be the chip on the back of the G saddle. Uh, the high E maybe lacks sustain. Uh, that, I'm pretty sure, is uh, the gap at the nut, which I opened up a little bit, and also smoothed the saddle a little bit, because there was some scoring. So. This one is done. I'm going to get it back to the owner. It says it's his favorite guitar. I'm sure he's missing it. So, I want to thank you for joining me. Give me a thumbs up for filming it for you. And we'll talk again soon. Bye for now. <laughs>